Welcome back to another episode of the Roblox Studio Tutorials. In this video, I'll show you how to make a teleport system where you can teleport between places in a game. Let me show you how I made it. Okay, so we're in Roblox Studio. First, you need a game that has multiple places in it, like the actual lobby and the actual individual games or individual servers that players go into. Now to do that, you saw me go into file, game settings, and we're gonna head down into places within game settings. And you see you have two places here, teleport place one and teleport place two. That's what I'll be primarily focusing on for this video. And if you want to get the asset IDs of those, which we'll later need, just click on this manage on creator hub, go into here and the places will be in here. So you just click on this and the asset ID is this extremely large number. First off, what we're going to do coding wise for this whole system, now that we've gotten everything on the back end done, we're going to create the teleport doors or which in my case were portals. Now I used portals and uh, particles I found on the toolbox. For this sake, you could just use the part and like get rid of the particles and it will still work, but I liked the way the particles looked and we're gonna go with that. This is also a little GUI I made, consists of the frame and a little drop shadow in the back. You see the white kind of blending in with one another. But with that drop shadow there, kind of add some depth to it. And in this UI, we have a frame, image label, name label, and that drop shadow I just mentioned. Now that we have this portal in place, we're going to create the teleport GUI, or which in this case is going to be a loading screen. So here is the teleport GUI. In this GUI, we have a canvas group, like the whole thing. You can customize the transparency of all the UI elements within that, which is super, super helpful, which is the black screen, which is in the canvas group or which is the canvas group, and we have the text label. And make sure this teleport GUI is like always enabled because we're going to be only adjusting the group transparency. Let's go ahead and start coding up functionality. And to do that, we'll head first into replicated storage, create a new folder and call this remote. Sorry, call this remote. And within this remote folder in the replicated storage, we're gonna create a new remote event. We're gonna call this teleport player. After we made this, which we just did, we're going to head into server script service we're going to create a new script. We're going to call the script teleport system. Let's get rid of this hello world and put in my own code. As well as putting in my own code, I also did some other stuff like add a module if I can find it right here. So if we head down the script, we have all of these services and the variables up here so we can later reference them when we need to. Down here, we have the initializing of the teleport doors. What we're doing, we're taking all of the teleport doors and we're just like updating that GUI. We're taking this ID that we see right here to find the actual place. We're getting the name of it and we're getting the icon image of it. Down below that, we are checking whenever this portal or the part is touched and we're teleporting the player using that teleport event and a teleport function that goes with the module script, which I created and mentioned earlier. So let's head to that module script, which is right below the script. All you have to do if you want to create one, head into this plus icon, module script, rename it to teleport player, and now let's go into it. Now within this module script, I took a lot of the code that was from the actual Roblox documentation and used it here because I believe Roblox did it best. And what Roblox does is that when we call this module script function, when we do this teleport players function, we go into directly right here. So what we're doing is we are teleporting the player to the place ID and the players and the teleport options that we pass through as parameters, which I haven't messed with at all. But getting back on topic, let's head back into that teleport player. And this is creating that teleport in sync, teleporting the player or attempting to teleport the player. And if not successful, we try again. If we try, we try, we try until we hit that attempt limit. And if we do reach that attempt limit, stop the code, then we return the result and the success. After the teleport player is returned, we check if it's a success. And if it is, from this teleport player event, we fire the client. Let's head out of the script and let's create that local script that will get that on client event. Let's go down to starter player scripts, which is down here. Create a new local script. We're going to name the script client teleport handler. Then we're going to get rid of this hello world and we're going to put my code in. I just got through writing the code for the script. Some noteworthy stuff to mention is that we were removing the default loading screen here and we are setting the teleport GUI, which the teleport service teleport GUI, we are overriding it to our own teleport GUI. Down here, we have a local function, which just blends in the loading screen and blends out the loading screen. Down here, when that client uh, fire server event is called, we're talking about the loading screen in, and here we're just setting the walk speed to zero, so the player isn't doing anything. Down here is just when this script is loading in, we, uh, we talk with the loading screen in, and after the loading delay, at that one second, two second delay, 
we blend out the loading screen then we just set the human or walk speed back to the default speed that's it for this tutorial i'll show you how to make a basic match system press this ready button and i wait for the match to load in five seconds on the clock five seconds expires the game is over